Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. Today we are going to be doing another unit review. This time we're going to have a look at the Cadian Shock Troops. In case you've not seen one of these unit reviews before, what I like to do is give an overview of the unit, then go through its basic stats, cover its pros and cons, and then finally give it a scoring and say, is it a unit I recommend or is it a unit that I would suggest you avoid? But without further ado, let's grab our Relic of Lost Cadia, flip off a Baden, and dive straight into this. Now, the Cadian Shock Troops are one of the most famous regiments within the Imperial Guard. For thousands of years, they held the line against Abaddon and his 13th Black Crusades. Unfortunately, during the 13th Black Crusade, Chaos finally got a win and Abaddon was able to destroy the venerable fortress world. Many people in the Imperium thought that this would be the end of the Cadian Shock Troops, but it was not. And in fact, they have continued to not only survive, but thrive after the loss of their homeworld. The reason for this is that there were many Cadian regiments that were off-world at the time of the fall of Cadia. And there were many Cadian colonies and planets that had been settled by veteran Cadian regiments all across the galaxy. Many of these regiments and settled worlds had maintained the martial tradition from their homeworld. And so instead of Cadia being focused on just one planet, now the Imperium found that it had lots of smaller Cadian colonies all throughout its territory. On top of this, the Cadians were such an inspiration and were so famous throughout the Imperial Guard that many worlds and regiments went to extreme lengths to try and emulate them and copy them, right down to the war gear and fighting style. And so it's all these different soldiers, the people that are doing their best to imitate the Cadians, the original Cadians that were evacuated from the homeworld, and all of the colonies which are represented in the new Guard Codex via the Cadian Shock Troop datasheet. Now, taking a close look at that datasheet, we can see that Cadian Shock Troops are a troop's choice. Due to them being a troop's choice, it means that they are not restricted by the rule of three. You can take as many of these squads as you have troop slots available in your army. Each squad comes with 10 models, a sergeant, and nine troopers. Now, I would class Cadian Shock Troops as line infantry. What that means is they are your standard dog soldiers. You are going to use them for everything from holding objectives to pushing into the enemy territory to screening out enemy assault units. They are your poor bloody infantrymen. Now, the Imperial Guard lives or dies on the tabletop based on the strength of its infantry corps and of its line infantry. So don't be surprised if you end up taking six, eight, or maybe even ten squads of these guys in your army. They very much are going to make up a solid infantry corps and the bulk of the models that you're going to field on the tabletop. But that's a general overview of the Cadians. Now let's dive into some specifics and let's start with their stats. So each Cadian Shock Trooper has a movement of six, a weapon skill of four plus, a ballistic skill of four plus, strength three, toughness three, one wound, one attack, leadership six, and a five plus save. The sergeant is going to have the exact same stats, except for he's going to have an extra attack and an extra leadership. This is your standard infantry stat line throughout your codex. Everything from your generic infantry squads, your Cadians, your Catachans, your Death Corps Krieg, they've all got this very standard stat line. What sets them apart is their war gear options and some of their datasheet abilities. Now, each shock trooper is equipped with a las gun and frag grenades. You'll note that as they are only regular infantry and not elite infantry, they do not come with crack grenades. Also, each shock trooper sergeant is equipped with a las pistol, a chainsaw, and frag grenades. In each 10 man squad, up to two shock troopers can have their las guns replaced with a special weapon. This can either be a flamer, a grenade launcher, a melter gun, or a plasma gun. Now, I want to make a little side note in regards to the special weapons. Right now, rules are written, you can take two of the same special weapon. However, there is some speculation in the guard community that this is a mistake. You see, there is a little bit of text on the data sheet that says you cannot select the same weapon more than twice per unit. But as Cadians can only take two special weapons, that little bit of restrictive text doesn't actually work and doesn't mean anything. So there is some speculation that that is meant to say you cannot select the same weapon more than once per unit. 
We'll have to wait for an FAQ to drop for GW to clarify that. What I would say is right now, you can take two special weapons of the same type. You can take double plasma, but when an FAQ does drop, and if, or if you're watching this video later on, you know, maybe six months down the line, you might want to just double check the GW FAQ to see if that has been corrected, because you might instead want to take a plasma and a melter gun. In addition to the special weapons, one Caden Shock Trooper with a Lasgun can be equipped with a Vox Caster, and the Shock Trooper Sergeant can replace their Las Pistol with a Bolt Pistol. So you can have a Bolt Pistol and Chainsaw, or a Las Pistol and Chainsaw. Or the Shock Trooper Sergeant can swap both his Las Pistol and his Chainsaw for a unique weapon that only Caden Sergeants can get, which is a drum fed auto gun. Guys, your Caden Shock Troops can get a Tommy gun. My recommended loadout for a Caden Shock Troop Squad is to take the two special weapon guys as plasma guns. If in the future you can't take two of the same special weapon, I would say a plasma gun and a melter gun. I'd always take the Vox Caster and I'd always give the Sergeant the drum fed auto gun. That gives you the most bang for your buck. Now, Cadians also have a great data sheet ability called Shock Troops. Each time a model in this unit makes a ranged attack with a LAS gun or LAS pistol, an unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. That's right, your Cadians get exploding sixes with their LAS guns. That's just a straight up damage buff. Getting free hits, even if they are just LAS gun ones, really will add up over the course of the game. What you've got to remember is you're not taking one or two squads of these guys. You're taking half a dozen at the minimum. You might even be taking a dozen squads of Caden Shot Troopers. All those free LAS gun hits are going to accumulate over the course of the game. And if you're facing an army that doesn't have armor of contempt and you tell those LAS gunners to take aim, there'll be an AP minus one. Suddenly, all those free hits from the Shock Trooper ability is actually really, really nice and a significant damage boost over the course of the game. Speaking of take aim, Caden Shock Troops really shine when they've got good officer support. On their own, they're okay. They hit on a four plus, they'll do some damage, but really, you're not gonna get the most out of them. However, like with all of the guard infantry choices, they get exponentially better if you support them with officers. Something as simple as a platoon command squad will massively improve the performance of your infantry forces. You could have your Cadians moving and advancing and still getting to shoot if you've got a commissar around them. You could have them just getting to hit on threes via take aim. You could have them pumping out more shots with first rank fire, second rank fire, trying to trigger as many of those shock trooper extra hits as possible. Just adding a single officer into the mix will really boost the output from these squads and make them much more effective and much more flexible as well. Orders really are the beating heart of the guard infantry force. If you're not sure how many infantry and how many officers you take, use this as a rough guide. What I like to do is take between four and six squads of infantry and support them with a Cadian Castellan and a command squad. What I then do is form this group of models into a ball and I'll have the infantry round the outside and I'll have the Castellan and the command squad on the inside. I make sure that all of my infantry are within six inches of the Castellan and six inches of the command squad. And as I'm moving them around the battlefield, I keep them in this formation and this close knit group. This allows me to order all of those squads to take aim, which gives them plus one to hit and plus one AP. They're also all getting reroll ones to hit, thanks to the Castellan and his senior officer rule, and they're all getting reroll ones to wound, thanks to the command squad and the regimental standard. Thanks to the buffs from the orders and auras of the officers, your line infantry in this group will punch well above their weight. They will be able to take on anything in the game and have a really solid chance of beating it. I have used this formation personally to take on everything from Blood Angel Death Company, Dark Elder Witches, and even Bloodthirsters of Corn. In fact, many of these battles and many of these fights with this formation I have recorded in battle reports. So if you want to see it in action, check out some of the video battle reports that I've got on the channel. 
But moving on, one of the best things about the Cadians is how cost effective they are. They are surprisingly cheap in terms of points. Each squad of Cadian infantry is only going to set you back 65 points. That makes them five points cheaper than Cathchans, which have a much worse data sheet, and it makes them 10 to 15 points cheaper than Death Corps of Krieg. And Death Corps of Krieg are probably equal to Cadians in terms of power. So what's the catch? Why are these guys so much cheaper than Krieg and the only the same cost as a regular squad of infantry, which a lot of people would say Cadians are better? Well, they do have a couple of disadvantages. The first one being that they are very fragile. They might come with two special weapons and they might have shock troopers, but they die just as easily as a regular guardsman. And they are much easier to kill than Krieg. Krieg have got mini transhuman built in. They've got medics. Cadians have none of that. They are a glass hammer. They do the killing, but they also do the dying. And in a funny sort of way, these guys are also kind of more fragile than your regular guard infantry squads. Now, you might say that's kind of crazy, Mordian. They've got the same stat line. Regular squads don't have any kind of data sheet ability that makes them tougher. Why are you saying Cadians are more fragile? Why are you saying they're more likely to die? Well, regular guard infantry squads can take heavy weapons and Cajuns can't. They can't even take sniper rifles, all right? Now, because regular infantry squads can take heavy weapons, it means that they can sit out of line of sight with a mortar shooting at the enemy and the enemy can't shoot back at them. And they'll happily sit on some backfield objectives doing that. Are they having as much damage output? No, but are they holding an objective? And are they still contributing to the fight? Yes. Now, Cadians can only take special weapons. They can't take any heavy weapons, not even sniper rifles. And the majority of Cadian firepower is going to come from weapons that want to be in rapid fire range, up close and personal with the enemy. You're talking plasma guns, melter guns, lance guns, trying to get as many of those free shock troop hits as possible. You're going to be in the thick of it with your Cadians, which means naturally they're going to take more casualties. They might do a lot more damage. You've got to accept the fact you're going to take a lot more damage back in return. Despite this, I would still say that Cadians are the best troop choice in the new Codex. They put out way more damage than any other unit. And sure, they might not be as durable as Krieg, but you can take more of them because they're significantly cheaper. And sometimes quantity has a quality of its own. Overall, I give them an 8.5 out of 10. They are very much a Mordian approved unit. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section below. Are you a Cadian fan? A Krieg fan? Have you had something fall on your head so you like Katachans instead? Let me know what you think down in that comment section. Are you exclusively taking shock troops or are you taking a mix of all the different infantry choices? If you enjoyed today's video, then please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to never miss an episode. Now, if you really enjoyed today's video or you found it particularly particularly helpful then please consider becoming a channel member or patreon supporter by becoming a channel member or patreon supporter you get a whole host of perks but one of the big ones being you gain access to the mordian glory discord community which has got over 700 active members in it there's always someone to chat to from everything from hobby and painting through to tactics and army lists so if that sounds like a whole load of fun and might be a res useful resource for you to draw upon please consider becoming a channel member or patreon supporter and i just want to take a moment to say a big thank you to all of the latest patreons and members now we have had an explosion of new people joining the channel recently so this might take a minute or two but i want to make the effort to say thank you to all of these fantastic people so a big thank you to pj alec deloney shepherd matthew cappuccino ib hidalago 334 justin cliff robert Alex, Jack, Son of Boulder, Oliver, Adrian, Cynodillion, Feels Badman69, Jay Hickman, Kian, Zoopskim, CT7479, John, Return of the Mac, Guard Brandon, Axel, The Anglo Germanic Wanderer, Holden, Dimitri, Rattle, Omega, Zach, Ads, Heretic Dave 40k, Dylan, Ben, Ryan, Jack, FRVN underscore six, Murray, Dennis, Shake My Head, Mark Andre, Terubiel, Nolan, Keith, Adept is Ridiculous, 
Total Fan, RC Gunner, Duke of Petchington, Mike, Igra, Richard, 9268.1, John, 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 David, Tank Sniper, Azragar, Wolfenbach, Alan, Sabian, Nick, Dylan, Fisher Fury, Kobold, Ymir, Marshall, Glomoff, Robert, Marcello, David, and Lord Biscuit. Thank you to all of you guys. Your ongoing support makes a massive difference, and thank you for doing your part. I also want to do a shout out to the latest Patreons as well. So a big thank you to Echo Marker, Potato Wrangler, Dan Dodge, Ragnarokus, Tsar Phoenix, Soviet Commubot, Vincent, Ads, Jared, Brian, Rawl, Dark One Mushroom, Nick, Nancy, Victor, Tack, Blazing Baron, Jesse, Michael, David, Colin, Stulty, Mr. Joel, Eventure, Adrian, Nathan, Hatman, and Old Bean. Thank you guys. I really appreciate your Patreon support. Now, last but certainly not least, I want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the War Masters, the people that have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. So a massive thank you to Bon Bon Vert, Phil French, Ross Miller, Tequile, Alex Dengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh, Swordfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Tom Sutton, and August Varney. Thank you guys for your very generous support. It makes a massive difference and is a huge part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.